Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's such a joy once again to welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite glad devotion. This has been an awesome week. And I believe because of the great love the Father has for us, he's bringing out these teachings. It is his plan that every one of us will turn out a successful person. God does not produce failures. Why fail in life? We have been looking at a solid foundation. You need to have a foundation that can make you a successful person in life. A solid foundation for successful living. And we have had four parts already. I told you we're going to have six parts. In today's episode, I'm going to try to combine two parts. So we're going to have the fifth and the sixth part in one so that we can round it off uh, today and can have the condensed dose on Sunday on live TV. Now, we have looked at the fact that there will always be the successful and there will always be the failed. As to which of them you will be is not because of who is your grandfather, which family you were born in, who is the president of your country, or are you born in Africa? No. It's all in your hands. There are people in North America that are failures. There are people in Asia that are successful. There are people in Australia that are failed. There are people in Africa that are successful. So it doesn't matter where you are. Before God, you are the one who have third country, first country, whatever country. For God, it is F. If you think that way, you will never feel disadvantaged by wherever you are. Because the Bible says in Acts 17, 26, God knows why you are where you are today. Have the bigger picture. Number two, we said there is a way people think that make them make a choice to fail. Many don't think that they have chosen to fail. By refusing to choose to succeed, it's an automatic choice to fail. We delved into that. Then we proceeded to look at what constitutes the choice to succeed. We learned so much under that. Then we proceeded to look at the mentality that makes people succeed. Successful people, they have a way they think. Boy, you need to watch that episode. Today we are going to move forward. And the fifth part is how the successful people work. That's part five. And part six is how the successful people see. That's the vision of the successful people. I'm going to try to combine these two parts in this episode. So we're going to condense things. So you have to uh, fasten your seatbelt as we take off for today, because we have so much to feast on in one episode. Are you ready? If you are, then let's share a word of prayer. Receive the virtues of life and spirit. Become, become by the reception of these virtues 
that these words bring to you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, how the successful work and see. How the successful work and see. The first part will measure on how the successful work. And then we'll now look at how the successful people see. Let's take off. How do successful people work? Colossians chapter 1 verse 29. It's our main scripture. Also again from the Amplified Translation. And it says that, For this I labor, often to the point of exhaustion, striving with his power and energy, which so greatly works within me. For this I labor often to the point of exhaustion, striving with his power and energy which so greatly works within me. We put in a mass that again, there is a way successful people work. Because of their mentality that they are convinced that they have all that it takes to succeed, successful people don't work as I'm going to try and see. They don't work like that. So, it, for successful people, they are either doing something or they are not doing it. Ordinary people who end up as failures are always trying. Well, I want to try to sell pure water. I want to try and sell onion. I want to try and do farming. And they are just trying. But for successful people, before they say, I'm doing this, they take their time to develop the conviction that this thing I'm about to do, I'm in to succeed. So they, they usually don't waste their time trying many things. They are result oriented. They don't do trial and see. That's how they work. And how do they work? They work hard. Hmm. What are that? Because of their mentality of being able to succeed, they don't work as a trial. They work as the means to the goal. And so they work hard. Successful people work hard. <laughs> oh. I want to say it again. Successful people work hard. If you see them enjoying their success, you think all oh, there is is what you are seeing. But behind the success is a challenging dimension of hard work. Success without hard work is a delusion of Satan. That will not end anyway. Any state of success you seem to have achieved without doing any hard work will not last. It's a fact. Durable success in life is always undergirded by hard work. Successful people have a way they work. They work to achieve results and they work hard. Look at the Apostle Paul. If you go to um, 1 Corinthians, you will see what he said in chapter 9, verse 26. He says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I. Not as one that beated the air. <laughs> Paul said, I don't do shadow boxing. No. By the time I say I'm throwing a blow, I've, I've aimed at a target. I don't do try and see. It was the same point I said that I labor with his working that worked mightily in me. Successful people work with the end result in mind, and they work hard. Oh my, successful people work hard. I'm a success, so I can tell you, successful people work hard. In fact, I'm actually amazed to discover that even in spiritual work, which you can say, oh, God Almighty has commissioned you, has called you, that even such a work, laziness has no place in it. The work of the ministry is hard work, but it is hard work from a place of rest. 
It takes labor in the word. It takes labor in prayer. It takes labor in meditation. It takes labor in fellowship to attain a spiritual transformation in your personality. If you are just a Christian that is used to all this, oh, uh, God, thank you for yesterday, bless you for today, and go and come, you, you just have a normal humanistic life battling with battles that are humanly generated. A lot of the battles of people is lack of spiritual labor. And I'm not talking about laboring from the flesh. I'll give you an example. In those days where they used to bake bread in these uh, earthen kind of ovens, you will not find any housefly or lizard in an oven that they just bake bread. Why? The temperature is too hot. But you leave it and don't bake bread inside for about some weeks and go ahead and see spider webs and all that. How did they come in? The place was cold. When your life is fervent in spirit, there are some demons that when they see you, they, they salute you and pass. But when your life is as cold as cold soup, it attracts those demons to come and settle. So a lot of battles in people's lives is lack of spiritual labor. And look at what Paul said. Paul said, I've labored, which is working that worked in me mightily. There is a way successful people work. They work hard. And they work with the end result in mind. They don't do, I'm trying and see. And before I run off on this subject to go and break so that we look at the scam part, we put out that the mentality that just a prayer or a release of grace from somewhere is all you need for success. It's a plain decision to fail. Did you hear that? Because in addition to prayer and grace, you must work hard. You know there are now a lot of Christians who don't want to do any serious thing on their own. They're just waiting for some serious prayer line. Then they say, I connect my job. I connect my marriage. I connect, just sit down and connecting things. <laughs> you get a breakthrough here and there. But that's not what it takes to live your life. Do your own prayer. Labor in truth. Labor in meditation. You must become as Christ as you grow. You can't remain just the same person, always connecting to prayer here and there and getting breakthrough or looking for grace here and there. Yes, we must be prayed for. Yes, we must receive grace. But when you receive the grace, what is the grace for? The grace is to help you to labor. Nobody can impart you with transformation. Nobody can impart you with maturity. But you can receive grace to labor in the world to renew your mind. Nobody can, can say, receive a change of mind, then suddenly your mind is renewed. No. Your mind will be renewed as you labor in meditation in the world. But you might need grace to be able to do that. So people can impart you with grace. So you can go and engage the word and meditate. And then a transformation comes. Are you catching this? Let me give you an example before we go on break. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 10. I, I love the Apostle Paul in these areas. And I, I mean, he's some, such a successful person that every Christian should study him. So I pray I'm not one of those who is against the Pauline letters. Because you are missing out a lot. 1 Corinthians 15, 10 says that, ah, Paul, I love it. It says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Did you hear that? So everybody likes, oh, I'm, I'm what I am by the grace of God. But it doesn't end. Let's start again. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Uh-huh. So you can receive so much grace. And after two years, that grace is in vain. After three days, it's in vain. So somebody can go, oh, I'll go for anointing service. Two days after that anointing service, everything is gone. What did he do with the, what he called anointing? What did he do when he called grace? He says, the grace that was bestowed on me is not in vain. But I labored, that's it. I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So according to Paul, what is the purpose of grace? It is the fuel for labor. But in today's Christianity, grace, anointing, power, they are fuel to rest. <laughs> no, it's not so. Anytime Samson st stared himself and power came, he didn't rest. That was time for action. So anytime you receive grace, it is time for action. What is the grace for? The grace is to enable a labor that will produce a result. So if you want to be among the successful in life, you must change the way you work. Begin to work for results and begin to work hard. Listen, your body is not happy with you if you don't work hard. Yeah. 
People who work hard rest well. Those who don't work hard and they're lazy about, they feel a lot of things in their bodies. Because your body was not made to function that way. Your mind is not made to function that way. Work hard. And I'm not talking about working with physical energy without the strength of the spirit. Let the grace you receive in your fellowship be used in prayer, in meditation, in word study, in fellowship, and every other thing that you ought to do to be a success in what God has called you to do. The successful people work hard. I'm going to go on a short break. When I come, we'll look at the sixth part of this discussion. Successful people have a way they see things. It is the vision of the successful. We shall look at that in our next session when we return after this break. Don't go away. I'll be right back after this break. Central Region Free. Why a crowd one the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binden. Reba one hour or shepa 97.5 FM. No, of the first August 2023, but we radio to push up 97.5 FM. Joda Kosi Fide Biara, Monday to Friday, a rubber 1.30, copy 2 p.m. No, on even a Bible, no, 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 Biblically authoritative teachings are of a transform. No, so walk up a baba kwa aye wa wa Jesus Christ. Me and my aye returning me are out of the day. Hallelujah! Or your good life devotion with Dr. David Bindon wa push up a 97.5 FM. Who wants some memory key? A baba ye, Nami Muiniji. Life is good and good. Wow, praise the Lord. So this brings us to the sixth part of this six-part series. That's the part six of uh, a solid foundation for a uh, successful life. And it is how the successful people see. Our main scripture again, and all these we are learning from the Apostle Paul by the Spirit, Philippians 3, 14. It says that, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press towards the mark, oh glory. I press towards the mark. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We put it that the people who are successful are always driven by a vision. What vision? A vision of a greater level of achievement, impact, and fulfillment than their present state. This is something that is common to anyone you find successful according to God's definition. They are enjoying today, but they are not satisfied with today. There are also those who never enjoy today. They just, they keep on chasing something and they never arrive. Such people just get, get into worrying and they get de de depressed or stressed. But a true successful person is never satisfied with now, though he's enjoying now. So he learns to enjoy today's success Yet, he doesn't settle here. He's looking at tomorrow's success. Successful people never come to a place where they say, oh, I'm done. They have a vision of a next higher level of achievement, of impartation, and of fulfillment. There is a way they see. Look all that the Apostle Paul did. He says, I'm pressing towards the mark. <laughs> If some people achieve what Apostle Paul achieved, they would have said, oh, have, ha, it's done. But he never said it's done until he was ready to leave this world. He says, I'm pressing towards the mark. There's a high calling. Do you want to be one of the successful people in life? You have to see life this way. Where are you? Don't stop there. People may be praising you for the level. What makes a lot of people become failures on the ways when they start enjoying the praises of men? Then they think what they are doing is okay. No, there's something higher than where you are. Until Jesus shows up, or until you have to check out of this world, there is always something you can do today better than yesterday. 
Always let your tomorrow be better than today. Never produce the same thing. That is why you must always pray and ensure that your spirit is fresher today than yesterday. Because it is out of the abundance of your spirit that you can produce any new thing. We put it that it is not enough to be dissatisfied with your current level and proceed to desire to achieve more. You know, to be able to move to the next level and to the next and to the next, you must have these two things. Always be dissatisfied with where you are and then desire to go higher. But those two are not enough. You must develop a vision of your next level. If you don't have a vision of where you are going, you never get anywhere. You never get anywhere. Now quickly, how do you ensure that you develop a vision of your next state? We'll put it, let me read this to you before I give you those steps. We said that successful people always see clearly where they want to get to as they work hard. And it is their vision that inspires their hard work. It is their vision that energizes them. It is their vision that empowers them to work hard. Okay, you have one company to the work you are doing, and it's bringing you A, B, C, D. Don't stop there. If you could have a company working while you are doing something, you can have another working while you are still doing the first two. You can do much more. If you are able to reach out to five people a month, you can do much more. There is never an end to what you can do. But begin to see it. How do you develop such a vision? If you take time to discover your place, your ability, and your resources in Christ, it will create a vision for you. So this is what it takes as a child of God to keep seeing higher visions. Discovering your place, your ability, and your resources in Christ. For instance, if I were sitting here, maybe I just had $1,000. All I would think about is something that I can do with $1,000. Now, if I discover that I have maybe $10,000, then immediately I'll begin to see what I can do. But if I have that $10,000 but I don't know I have it, my vision will remain around a $1,000 vision. Are you following it? So the reason why we keep studying the word, especially the word of his grace, Acts uh, 20, 32 says that I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and make you to experience your inheritance in Christ. There is a place you have. But you need the word of his grace. What is that word I've been teaching you? It's the word that teaches you who you are in Christ, what you are capable of doing in Christ, and what you have in Christ. The more you discover your abilities, the more you discover your resources in Christ, the higher your vision goes. So a Christian who doesn't know who he is will be measuring himself by the estate the father left him 40 years ago, which has reduced to, you know, because your father can leave you an estate today, which is $10,000. In five years' time, that estate will be worth maybe $5,000. As the days go, inheritance is reduced in value. But resources in Christ never depreciate. Glory to God. Discover your worth in Christ. Discover your ability in Christ. Discover your potential in Christ. This is why we inspire the study of the word. Some people wonder, why do we keep studying the Bible if you know so much? No, we are not studying because we want to know. We study because we are made. Man shall not live by bread alone. Why do you eat every day? You should have gotten tired of eating. Reading the word and studying the word is the way our spirits feed. So as long as you cannot stop feeding the body, you cannot stop feeding the spirit. The more of the word you imbibe, Karabazoa, the, the stronger you become. The more you discover your abilities and you can take new mountains. You can take greater mountains for God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Begin to pray right now and declare that from today I see with the eye of a successful person. I see my next higher level in my home, in my ministry, in my calling. Begin to see it by this impartation as you go into the word. The Holy Ghost will guide you to see higher levels. Begin to pray right now. Father, I thank you by the streaming forth of this power. I bring your people in the encounter of the word to higher levels of visions where they should go now and forever. Hallelujah. If you learn all that we have taught this week, there's no witch, there's no power, there's no government anywhere that can stop you from being a success. It is the same thing with your overall life. Listen, there is a, an African proverb that says that nobody teaches a child to know God. Why? 
there is a particle of God in every human being that makes him know that I need God. Do not allow your coming to this world, joining or being born into any home to make you ever think that life is all there is on this earth. There is an eternity hidden in you which you must work towards its alignment. This is what God ordained, that when you come into this world, there will be a time when you receive the fullness of his life and become his son. Don't joke with this thing and end up in destruction. God is real. He has a plan for you. Jesus is the way you can have access to that only true God. John 17, 3 says that this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and his son, Jesus, whom you have sent. If it is not true, Jesus, it is not the only true God. This is what I recommend for you, Jesus Christ. He died and rose again and made way that today, if you believe, you can become a son of God automatically. By a regeneration that will take place in your spirit. What does it take? Believe he died and rose again, declare him as Lord, and you'll be born again. If that's what you want to do, say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I believe with all my heart that you came into this world, that you died for me, and that you were raised from the dead. Jesus, I receive into my spirit by my personal confession that Jesus is Lord. I am born again. Glory, hallelujah, congratulations, you are born again. You have done this all your heart. You did get born again. Do contact us and I will help you to grow. Surely I'm going to come your way again our weekend edition of Metro TV, 10 p.m. tomorrow and on Sunday. And our special Sunday buffet on live TV, 4 to 6 p.m. And then, God willing, we shall come back next week again with another uh, series. Till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Pendant. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website finalglobalmovement.org Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.